anyone here have chronic pain or know or love someone with chronic pain? Hands up. Let me see them. How about someone who's addicted or is dead as a result of the opioid painkillers used to treat it? And for the three of you with your hands still in your lap, I want you to imagine any pain that you've ever had. I'm going to use labor as an example, and I provided a handy illustration for those of you who may not be able to relate. <laughs> now, mothers the world over can take a massive amount of pain because they know for sure it'll be over in a day or two. But what if after you birthed that baby, or got a headache, or just woke up with pain for no apparent reason, and it never went away? Day in, day out, consuming your life, your family's life, stealing your mojo on every level. That's chronic pain. Now, what would you do? What wouldn't you do to make it go away? You'd do anything. We all would, which is why chronic pain is the number one presenting complaint to U.S. doctors, the number one reason people are out of work, and economists say it costs us $630 billion a year. And yet our treatment success, our outcomes for the treatment of chronic pain are among the worst in the developed world. And it is because we have been looking right here all along for a quick fix for a chronic problem. At every level, as individuals, we have a limited and flawed understanding of chronic pain, and what we do understand, we don't want to accept. As doctors, we have completely botched the treatment. But to be fair, we are just individuals taught by other individuals who don't really understand chronic pain. And we work in a system, a society of we the people, made up of healthcare systems, hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, insurance companies, who have ignored and in some cases perpetuated this problem for so long that our system is on the brink of total collapse under the cost of it. And only a revolution can bring us back. And I'm in, y'all, I'm in. We just have to understand how we got here in the first place. It starts with chronic pain itself. It's a perception. How do you prove someone has a headache? You come to me, a doctor, a pain specialist, in the position every day of judging your perception of pain based on my perception of your pain. And the desperate hope of everyone I see is that I can do anything, something, to make it stop. Now, would you bank those hopes on me if I rolled up looking like this? <laughs> right? Perception matters. So I show up in all this with my diplomas and research to try to show you my doctor side that I'm legit, that you can trust what I have to say. And likewise, in a 10-minute doctor visit, a patient is going to present to me how severe their car accident 10 years ago, how bad their headache, how, how impressive their disc bulge on their MRI. And maybe leave out the depression and the drinking and the divorce because why does that matter? And also the worst thing that can happen is the doctor thinks it's all in your head. The thing is, all pain literally is in your head. Let me ask you this. This child here, first time, doesn't want to go to school because of a presentation or there's a monster under the bed. What's that kid say? My tummy hurts. The tummy, where all the brain transmitting nerves are highly evolved, going to the guts to respond to adrenaline. And studies show that if those growing nerves are bombarded with adrenaline from whatever cause, Kids with rough childhoods are over twice as likely to develop chronic pain in multiple areas as adults. And we all grow up and have the perfect kids and the perfect marriage and the perfect job and the perfect Facebook profile, right? <laughs> kids describe a physical symptom based on an emotional issue. 
Yet as adults, we continue to deny that pain from mental stress can manifest as pain in the body. When did we forget the tummy ache? Pain is in our heads. You cannot feel pain without a functioning brain. And if that pain signal goes over and over to your brain, all the nerves to the body become sensitized. We doctors call this central sensitization, and virtually every patient I see has it. And what's more, the pain pathways and the mood pathways and the sleep pathways are all overlapping in there, and they cannot be separated. So no matter which goes awry first, whether it was the sleep, the mood, the pain, they all three will be affected. It is just the way humans are made. But it all feels like pain in the body. So if I have back pain and I have a disc bulge, that's not a perception, that's reality. But did you know if you take an MRI of 100 people with no back pain whatsoever, two-thirds of them will have a disc abnormality. Both these people could have back pain. Neither of these people could have back pain. The body alone will not tell the story. So if that's true, why don't my doctors know that? Because doctors are trained to diagnose and treat physical symptoms in the body. And by trained, I mean a recent North American study found that doctors receive three hours of incomplete, fragmented, and sparse total education about pain. But what we are taught to do is to cut and inject and prescribe based on our narrow focus. And if one doctor can't help you, there's another doctor. If another doctor shows up on a zebra bike, there's another doctor. And there's another pill and another pill until the average American gets 13 prescriptions every year. And what's more, the CDC says we write enough opioid prescriptions for every American to have one dose three times a day for 42 days a year. And this is where that's left us. Americans are 5% of the world's population. We use 66% of the world's illegal drugs, 80% of the world's opioids, and 99% of the world's hydrocodone, which is Lortab and Vicodin. One in five teens have used pain pills recreationally, largely taken from the medicine cabinets of friends and family members. Four in five new users of heroin started on pain pills. And heroin use is up 287% in the past decade. And right here today, the number one cause of accidental death in the United States is opioid overdose. That's more than car crashes. And it's largely by people who are taking these medications initially for chronic pain. Do not misunderstand me. If you have cancer, if you have surgery, no one will ever take your opioids away from you. But did you know that no scientific study has ever shown that opioids are effective for chronic pain after about six months? And after that time period, it starts to switch your body so that you actually have the capacity to feel more pain in addition to messing with your mood, your sleep, your immune function, your sexual function. If I had sinusitis and went to a doctor, got some antibiotics, and after six months it wasn't helping, would they say, it's all right, you'll just be on them the rest of your life. Enjoy your diarrhea and yeast infections. <laughs> Chronic pain is not a lack of pain pills. Chronic pain is not a lack of pain pills. We're missing something. Y'all remember this little tune? The knee bone's connected to the hip bone. The hip bone's connected to the... Right. So we sit a certain way, stand a certain way, sleep a certain way, years on end. And we're surprised when cutting out a disc or 10 sessions of physical therapy doesn't reverse 20 years of that. And so we retire to the couch and we quit moving because it hurts. Has anybody been to the gym after taking about a year hiatus? What does it feel like the next day? We hurt. But hurt is not the same thing as harm. And the hurt gets better as our bodies get stronger. The thing is we cannot get around it. You have to move regularly.
if you have chronic pain, especially if you have chronic pain. And in fact, it is the cornerstone of all effective evidence-based treatment of central sensitization. And it is way better if that movement incorporates breathing and mindfulness techniques like yoga. Right. You know, I can keep, I hear you. You can keep your new age hippie shit. How is yoga and meditation <laughs> going to work if surgery and Oxycontin don't? The thing is, so much data show that we can dramatically reduce the effects of central sensitization, drastically reduce our pain experience by doing nothing but change the way we think, breathe, and move. Harvard neuroscientists have even recently shown that we can change the very structure of our brains, very structure of our brains, and prevent and reverse the changes associated by chronic pain using nothing but our own breath, our minds. Remember that woman in labor? What's the number one treatment of labor pain worldwide? Listen, pills and procedures do work for some people, but if they are not working for you, we have to accept it's not working for a reason and do something different. And I can't promise a cure. 30% of people worldwide will have chronic pain, but the levels of disability and the death by opioids are a uniquely American phenomenon. We have tried one way. It's time for another. What if? There were one place where all the experts who understood chronic pain and central sensitization lived. Psychologists, doctors, nutritionists, movement therapists, all under one roof. What if there was a program where they could optimize your medications, help reduce your opioids, where there was telemedicine, where you can continue to heal at home, where we, where we research this, we educate about this, we find it's so much better than the way things are now. What if I told you these programs already exist? There are programs who, that have existed for years in the workers' compensation system, commonly called functional rehabilitation programs. They meet every one of those what-if criteria above. If you go to a functional rehabilitation program, a small group of individuals with pain meet with a whole team of experts under one roof intensively for weeks on end. You learn all the evidence-based body, mind techniques that you need to get better. And it's often coupled with telemedicine so that it sticks after you go back to your stressful real world. These programs have existed for years with people developing their own personalized healing systems, using skills that don't cost them a thing, don't require them to set foot in a pharmacy or a doctor's office. They exist in Texas, California, some big academic, academic centers, but they only exist if you're, for you if you're injured on the job or if you're rich, which is a shame because every robust scientific study, piece of data we have shows that these programs work. Doesn't matter what state, doesn't matter what country, does not matter what kind of healthcare system. If you go to a functional rehabilitation program, pain improves, sleep improves, mood improves, quality of life improves, opioid use is eliminated. And two-thirds of patients return to work and healthcare costs are reduced by 66%. That is 66% of $630 billion a year. So why don't we do it? Well, <laughs> insurance doesn't cover it. Administrators have deemed that they're too expensive to set up. And frankly, it flies in the face of our quick fix, fragmented, multi-doctor system that frankly, we demand. And it doesn't make money for the hospitals or for the big pharmaceutical companies for us to stay out of the system, does it? Yeah. 
In fact, the hardest pill to swallow is that a quick fix for chronic pain doesn't work any more than Ritalin for ADHD, fad diets to cure obesity, anti-aging creams to reverse time. There is no quick fix. There is no quick fix. But there is a fix. And you in this audience have now received 15 more minutes of education about it than the vast majority of providers you will ever see to help you treat your pain. So it's up to each of us to spread the word. I want to close with a case study. Um, came from an article written by Drs. Afton Hassett and Robert Pinels for a prestigious medical journal in 2013. In it, they describe a 46-year-old white male with a chaotic childhood who was in and out of the hospital for tummy ache. He developed back pain that he attributed to a sports injury in college, but after years of steroid injections and two back surgeries, he was still in a back brace. He developed severe anxiety and depression, and at one point was on 12 medications for anxiety and depression. Medications he took right up until the day he was assassinated. Chronic pain, no matter how seemingly hopeless, does not have to disable us. Even the best our system had to offer did not help the President of the United States back then. But that is because we did not understand his pain as un unrecognized central sensitization treated by a broken system. But we do now, and, we, and, and it's been years. It's time for something different. Like JFK, we will need a village to get better, but we will not need his unique prestige and access. What we need is that revolution. And this is the path. Each of us admits that stress and lifestyle choices can contribute to and even cause chronic pain at any age. We hold ourselves and our loved ones accountable to seek out the longer, more durable path to real relief, even when a pill is available on every corner. We advocate to anyone who will listen educators, doctors, legislators, insurers, that we need more holistic functional rehabilitation options available to all of us. And by example, we show our kids that they are empowered to be active participants in their own healing, in their own lives, as are each of us in here. We all can do it. We can do this together. I believe that. All we have to do is take a deep breath, look at the big picture, and move forward together to a future where chronic pain or opioids will be the last thing holding us back.